Good morning all on day one of Financial Security Conclave 2022. Here at DSCI, we're very, very excited uh, to kickstart our day one of FinSec Conclave 2022. To start the event or to start the morning, uh, we have an exciting masterclass uh, mixed with a demo session. And towards the end, we have a tech chat with three of very inspiring leaders uh, by Fortinet and DSCI. So without further ado, I would request uh, Mr. Uh, Ramanan, Director Sales, uh, SD WAN, Fortinet, to please join me on the stage and start his presentation. Yeah, hi. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon to everyone. It's really nice to virtually meet you all uh, during uh, this uh, DSEI FinSec Conclave. Uh, my name is Ramanan. I am responsible for the uh, secure SD-WAN business for Fortinet in India and South region. Uh, I've been in the industry for the last uh, 27 plus years into various different technology selling uh, like, you know, organizations uh, working with the different verticals and the BFSI is one of the vertical where I have extensively uh, worked with many, many customers offering quite a lot of uh, uh, solutions uh, to the customers. So today in our discussion, uh, we are going to discuss about the one of the very powerful and one of the vibrant solutions which is getting widely adopted across the BFSI sector, which is uh, uh, secure SD-WAN. So uh, without much of a time, like, you know, let me just uh, share my uh, uh, screen. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So, so Fortinate Secure SD-WAN, uh, as I said, this is one of the very powerful solution, which is getting widely accepted and adopted by many, many BFSI customers. So we will the way at which we have structured this conversation is I'm going to just share some broader view in terms of what do we do, what you get out adopting to uh, uh, like, you know, through this solution. And uh, uh, by just talking on the PowerPoint is not going to like, you know, uh, be uh, so interesting. So what we have also done is whatever I'm going to talk, my colleague Syed Haider is going to follow through by a live demo in terms of demonstrating uh, how effective this secure SD1 is going to help uh, all of you. And uh, uh, after Haider's uh, discussion, like, you know, we have uh, a tech chat, like, you know, so because it is very important that uh, to understand how the technology is one side, like, you know, getting, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, integrated for BFSI as a sector. So we have uh, my, uh, my another colleague, uh, 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 Ms. Anita Shreyaka, who will join along with me, uh, uh, along with the, our moderator, who we are going to have a very important, like, you know, very conversational tech chat in terms of how this is going to be on the ground effective today and how customers are going to get adopted. So this is a very, very important uh, discussion conversation session. So we would request all of you to just fine tune. So to make it more interesting, we will uh, ask some core poll questions. And I'm sure that uh, uh, you all will have some questions which is going to arise. Feel free to put it in the chat box. Uh, like, you know, we will be more than happy to answer. Uh, uh, depends upon the time again. Uh, if not uh, 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 now, 100% we are sure that all your questions are going to be answered. Uh, uh, like, you know, so please feel free to uh, share your questionnaires. So with that, let me just uh, kickstart and, you know, give you a, a small overview of most of you aware of Fortinet as an organization, one of the leading security organization for the last two plus decades, we have been uh, serving the uh, uh, our customers like, you know, uh, for more than two decades and uh, very uniquely, we are uh, one organization which is uh, both listed in NASDAQ 100 and S&P uh, 500. And uh, we have been kind of growing in terms of the revenue profitability and uh, in terms of the net new 
uh, innovations, uh, particularly that is very, very critical and important in IT. One of the most important thing is the innovation. We have the maximum number of 1,200 plus, uh, like, you know, the uh, patents which is being uh, filed. And uh, so we have been well recognized, as I said, in the industry uh, and uh, adopted by many, many customers. And we have been uh, happy serving many customers, like, you know, uh, globally. So, as I said, like, you know, uh, the, the number of patents talks a lot because that is the kind of uh, time, effort, energy and people resources which we put across for any new inventions. We have 10,000 plus uh, employees across, uh, out of which India is kind of like, you know, growing like anything. Uh, in India, we are a 500 plus organization. We have our R&D. Uh, based out of uh, in, in Bangalore, you know, more than 150 employees, uh, R&D employees work from here. And uh, apart from that, we have a, a development center in Pune as well. Uh, we have a tax center here, which has been again growing. We have been supporting customers across APJ and EMEA in other global regions, <coughs> excuse me, uh, from uh, Bangalore. Uh, we have a wide presence of our sales organizations spread across in the most of the uh, cities across the country today. So our India presence has been growing. Companies have been investing a lot of money. We acquired three Indian companies uh, getting their technologies merged along with the overall Fortinet, uh, uh, like, you know, the uh, uh, cybersecurity solution architecture. Uh, so that's, that's the uh, quick brief. And we'll be proud to say that the our presence in the market is uh, like, you know, one out of three uh, uh, firewalls which are sold in the market today uh, is a Fortinet device. So that is a kind of presence and the market share market landscape which we have. What's happening in the industry today, uh, like, you know, one of the very uh, hot topic is this network and security getting into a convergence technology, like, you know, so the net, net sec, which we call it as. Uh, so we call in Fortinet, it is a secure security driven networking, wherein the networking, uh, uh, like, you know, components, terminologies, features, functionality is getting merged along with the security and the entire solution, which is given to our customers in a platter, which is a security driven uh, networking. And we see that the whole market is moving towards this direction because network and security goes hand in hand and this requires an integrated one single consolidated solution to the customers so while sd wan as a technology exists in the market for more than six seven years there is a huge potential and pull in for secure sd wan and sd branch i'm going to talk about that and there has to be some reason right the reason for that is one Today, the landscape of application and the data is kind of like, you know, moving here and there. I have uh, my core application here. Some of my other applications are gone to a SaaS application. My collaboration tool is a SaaS application. I am moving some of the other applications onto private cloud or to the public cloud. So the, like, you know, kind of uh, the movement is here and there. At the end of the day, the expectation is that the users, nevertheless, whether they are going to work from office or from home, because post COVID, everybody have this hybrid workforce environment, which is continuing to happen. In this scenario, the expectation is simple that I want my users to access the application wherever it is residing, wherever it is hosted, apps and data should be accessed in the most highly secured manner. And at the same time, in the higher, the highest performance uh, like, you know, the user experience, which can be rendered across to the user. So this is what the expectation. Then this is like, you know, when the apps and data are moving and the complexities are kind of getting increased, the traditional uh, WAN network or a LAN network or the security, uh, like, you know, being working in silos is not going to help customers. With What is the challenges customers face today uh, with the traditional network uh, architecture and the network and security working uh, as silos. Uh, uh, one is the experience, like, you know, the user experience is uh, very bad. While one side, the application heaviness is increasing, but the other side, when we look at the uh, bandwidth is remaining the same, or you keep on increasing the bandwidth by keep uh, 
like you know paying more and more money but that's not going to increase the performance we'll have to do something different and that's exactly the biggest challenge today heaviness of the application and the bandwidth quality with all those things like you know, the user is getting affected because he's not experiencing or he's not getting the best of experience accessing those application the two is the van cost we all know that like you know in india the cost difference between uh, mpls and all the other internet links uh, today there is a huge cost difference between these two and not only the cost the bandwidth also there is a huge difference between uh, what we get in mpls and uh, of course there are a lot of uh, enterprise class uh, benefits which customers used to say if you like you know get it on a mpls we service the internet because it is a public shared link but if we could able to bring that security embedded and also the kind of uh, uh, the sla on uh, measuring the uh, uh, connectivities uh, like you know uh, and the bandwidth uh, why not like you know open the gate and whatever the last mile available we can make use of that that's going to bring down the huge cost reduction on the bandwidth which is being spent today the not only on the bandwidth if we also look at traditionally we have been investing on point products like you know on a router separately on a utm device separately on a, a van op or an sd van device separately like you know why don't we have a consolidated one single solution which is going to kind of reduce the total cost of ownership drastically and at the same time today our, our operations are very complex in nature because we have a separate network console separate bandwidth uh, console and the security console which is very difficult to manage all these things why don't we have one single consolidated view in terms of managing the network and security and with the increased threat in the market there and there we keep hearing about the new new cyber security threats which is happening around it is very very important particularly in the fintech uh, vertical security is one of the most important critical area which needs to be considered on every solution which is getting adopted uh, so that is another area of concern that's where we came out with this one single solution which is going to kind of break the rules and uh, make it so simple for customers in terms of adopting investing and managing where we are entire one single solution which we are talking about is a single device which is a cp device which will sit in the branches and the central uh, system could be uh, like you know a physical device or a virtual appliance which can be any of your private cloud or in the, any public clouds so this solution has an embedded uh, like you know with and uh, uh, one the ngfw which is a next generation firewall with full capability of the uh, security solution and uh, full fledged sd wan functionalities uh, which i'm going to talk about highlight some of it and the entire advanced routing including ipv6 so we have never compromised on any features functionalities we have got all the full fledged fully loaded solution which is available along with the ZTNA powered uh, like you know all these on a single solution one OS uh, like, which is 40 OS and one single management console the visibility and analytics tool which uh, which is given along with this solution which is a very very powerful and gives you a very highly granular uh, in-depth information about every single incoming and outgoing traffic and the movements which is happening in your uh, uh, network so this is brings like uh, kind of like you know whatever the uh, challenges which we have seen in the previous slide in terms of uh, the performance increase for the users rather than all the traffic traditionally goes to one data center from there it gets out to the internet access or any SaaS based application here what we are doing is we are powering on the branch office itself so you have the freedom and flexibility to go with any link whether it is mpls ill broadband lte 4g any kind of connectivity at the end of the day what we will do it one we are going to secure all the link with the ipsec tunnel link from one end to the other end and two we you can also have all the uh, corporate security policies embedded on to this in the irrespective individual branches all the url filtering and also the anti-spamming anti-malware all the uh, next generation firewall functionalities which will be embedded at the branch level itself <clears throat> and the users is going to access any of the application 
they they have the freedom to directly access this application rather rerouting through the data center this will help improvising the performance of the user uh, accessing that application like you know by 10 times uh, this is again we are eliminating many pops that is going to help uh, reaching out and most importantly when i'm going to combine multiple bandwidth together and make the pipe bigger obviously the performance is going to be much much uh, superior compared to the current uh, traditional single uh, cable network uh, access which is happening so uh, the second challenge so uh, problem number one is the user experience which we are taking care problem number two is the van cost which we talked about in the previous slide uh, like you know our entire solution helps customers in terms of giving you freedom and flexibility of pick and choose whatever the last mile available and uh, you will save a lot of money like you know in terms of uh, picking the right uh, connectivities uh, whichever is available right uh, so we will take care of the security we will take care of the link which is good to connect at that point of time so that the users won't suffer all those uh, bandwidth related uh, kind of constraints whichever used to have in the earlier days is taken care with the, the secure sd band solution so uh, point products bringing in together instead of investing on separate separate devices uh, this one single consolidated solution helps you save a lot of money and the manageability becomes simpler and easier because you are going to have only one single console where all the van uh, functionalities and security functionalities is going to be managed on the same uh, like you know the uh, tool itself right and we also talked about the high risk which is happening and with our powerful ngfw for last two plus decades we have been serving millions and millions of customers globally and uh, uh, we are veteran when it comes to the security domain and uh, like you know so any kind of uh, uh, so security uh, challenges security risks uh, we have the right solution in place so the challenges with our one single stop solution, uh, like, you know, we have Fortinet Secure SD band, which will take care of the moving away from the current problems. And as I said, this could be anything. Today, your data center is on-prem or it is core low or it is moved to private cloud. We have the same uh, feature functionality solution available as physical or virtual or on any public cloud. We are available on any public cloud. What is the outcome adopting to uh, secure SD band, we are sure that you will have a superior user experience and the uh, experience, uh, like, you know, we could able to uh, look at a 10x performance improvement on the uh, user experience and 99% reduction on the uh, risk, which is security risks, which is happening across. And the most important thing is we help helping customers reduce their total cost of ownership by up to 65 percentage that's a huge money and uh, that's a direct cost saving for the organization <clears throat> to go one step ahead like you know we can have a we are doing a lot of uh, router refreshment uh, replacements because routers as a technology like you know routers are getting obsolete and you know the sd one built in with the routing functionalities is helping customers in a big way and uh, our single solution comes by default with sd WAN and router inbuilt with a stateful firewall. The same device, like, you know, you can upgrade because we do have customers who says that I am continuing to do my uh, security on my central edge device. And uh, so I want to have only sd WAN. So we give them the thin edge as a solution. Uh, customers who want to have a full-fledged secure sd WAN, wherein the entire NGFW at the branch level itself to be enabled, all you have to do it is top up by a simple uh, security license on the same physical appliance to move one step ahead like you know what fortinet has done is also to get the entire lan environment also together to work along with this van and security that is called sd branch so fortinet has a full suite of uh, uh, l3 switches 40 switch and access points for wi uh, wireless lan connectivity in your branch office wherein all, the entire solution of your LAN, WAN, and security works on one single OS and one single management console. No more the days where you used to struggle having multiple consoles and none of them talk to each other. In the absolute inter interoperability is the biggest problem uh, customers been facing it. Here is a solution where everybody works together 
and like you know uh, it's the simplest way to manage your lan van and security under one roof and in one single console so this is a very powerful solution and uh, this is really really critical and important and you will see uh, not only like you know the uh, cost benefit but also the technology advancement of each and every components in your branches talking to uh, like you know others and they all work in sync rather than in silos so this solution is been well validated and recognized by many industry uh, uh, analysts like you know for the last 3 years uh, fortinet sd wan which is the wan edge solution is been recognized as the leaders in gartner magic quadrant not only in wan edge on the next generation firewall fortinet is been consistently been in the leader category for many years so apart from the magic quadrant gartner also does something called the peer insight which is a customer choice for the last 3 years consistently fortinet sd wan wan edge solution is been uh, the best customer choice and we have been getting this uh, customer choice award Uh, through the Gartner Peer Insights and the maximum voting and the percentage of customer selection is uh, goes to Fortinet and you know that's where the our solution is being well recognized in the industry apart from Gartner IDC Frost and Radar Frost and Sullivan quite a lot of other analysts been recognizing us uh, this is uh, uh, like you know one of the Indian media who awarded us as the best SD WAN player uh, in this year. and many many uh, uh, accolades and recognitions like uh, the best recognition we always feel is our customer recognitions here are some few customer recognitions which we are happy to share with like you know globally we have more than 30000 deployments on sd wan in india more than 500 customers spread across all the verticals been adopting to our technology so uh, this is again a proven solution and well adopted and recognized in the industry uh so we talked about like you know why uh, sd wan uh, is required why now and then we also talked about like you know what is uh, the recognition in the industry for us now what we are going to talk about is exactly what is this sd wan does right in a simple way if i have to talk about the complex architecture and is a very expensive architecture with all these wan lan security which all working in silos we are making it as one single solution which is simple agile and cost effective and that's exactly which we are doing it through this solution not to go in depth technical but some of the very important functionalities which needs to be highlighted i am going to talk about uh, uh, the, during uh, this session and some of these i am talking uh, is going to be showcased in live uh, by sayed haider who is going to come and share a live demo Uh, after my presentation please say stay, stay tuned uh, so one of the important functionality is the application recognition we have plenty of applications <clears throat> and somebody has to recognize me uh, today and then like you know one priority give priority to that particular application like you know and also ensure that there is no packet loss and also ensure that fastest way for me to reach out and access that particular application so this is what we have made this application resilient network and uh, absolutely this is uh, like you know one of the very very unique thing which fortinet is doing where our sd wan solution can recognize more than 5000 applications right so you can imagine like you know all the applications majorly been used today uh, it's all been already we have uh, uh, can be recognized by our sd wan once it recognizes what it does it will first check whatever the priority settings qis priorities and also it will check which is the bandwidth which is available at that point of time i have one mpls one ill one broadband which is the right path for me to selection criteria and it also ensures like you know uh, uh, that the due duplication whether it is required to ensure there is no packet loss so today it is no more an application access we have audio video this entire session is happening through uh, a virtual event so audio video tra tra traffic priority and also the heavy heavy bandwidth needs needs to be allocated these all something which sd wan on its own does it so there is no need for any ma manual interruptions like you know manually somebody allocating for audio have this much for video this much it's sd wan it takes care of all these uh, activities on its own the number 2 is like you know uh, the uh, cloud wrapping 
so as I said, like uh, our solution is available across any of the public clouds today. And you can enable NGFW along with SD-WAN on any of the public clouds, whether it is getting a VM and taking a BYOIL or FortiGate, uh, uh, like, you know, the solution is all uh, available on all the marketplace across all the public cloud providers. So it's like a fully, uh, like, you know, cloud native uh, uh, integration along with our uh, security fabric. It's pretty simple and it's the same console uh, which we are going to manage. Uh, like you know whether it is on prem or on the cloud uh, infrastructure uh, like you know a single pen of glass when i said like you know one single console you can manage you can manage so many things uh, lan wan cloud and also the full fledged security functionalities can be managed and uh, i'm not going to go in depth because these are all screenshots while hyder um, is going to show in live uh, the 40 manager and the 40 analyzer which is a really really powerful tool which gives you real time uh, uh, and also the recorded version of every single granular activities uh, traffic which is incoming and outgoing tra traffic what is the latency what is the jitter condition uh, what is the application access like you know every single in depth analysis is going to be provided through this solution right so uh, the consistent certified security across all the edges whether it is switch or whether it is van or whether it is security which is put across everywhere the consistency in terms of having every security parameters at port level at every single edge level and also on all the connectivity level being a security organization we are very very particular about the security at all levels and that's the whole emphasis and as i said this solution comes with the uh, zero trust network uh, uh, embedded and uh, you can have a ztna with the hybrid workforce today people are accessing their application from multiple devices multiple network uh, like you know somebody has to kind of do the user identity and also ensure the uh, security policies and uh, are in place and that's the exact job of the zero trust network which is already there this is very important because today we are working, we are moving towards a transition of 4G to 5G and we do understand like, you know, across uh, the uh, micro cities and, you know, this, the, the tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, we have so many layers and uh, uh, the, uh, the main link reaching out to all the cities is very difficult and at the same time, uh, like, you know, uh, going and investing on such a huge MPLS connectivity for small users in a smaller branch, like, you know, so that's where you can make use of the LTE 5G today. Government is talking about uh, uh, getting the 5G at the earliest possible. Today, we are all already on 4G. Our solution is available, like, you know, for you to adopt and you can have a full-fledged secure SD-WAN expansion with LTE or 5G. We are 5G ready, right? This is a, just a quick competitive landscape like you know this is an analysis uh, it is a gartner critical capability landscape uh, 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 column which they have put across scheduling all the different uh, players sd event players and uh, why fortinet has been the leader because we, because of these reasons because we kind of meet all the critical capabilities as per gartner and that's why we are rated uh, number one uh, compared to any of the other SD-WAN players. This is a technical comparison we will be happy to share with you. There are quite a lot of uh, interesting things uh, Fortinet does when it comes to SD-WAN vis-a-vis any other players in the industry. Uh, like one of the most important thing is why customers choose Fortinet when there are other alternate solutions available. Uh, like, you know, I think this is my last slide, with, uh, uh, with, but this is very important. One is scalability when it comes to BFSI. You are you are growing your number of branches growing your number of customers are growing like you know our technology also should support that scalability. So Fortinet is a secure SD WAN solution is one of the solution which is being recognized by many and adopted by many customers who has thousands and thousands of branches under one single architecture one single console all the branches uh, like you know being managed. Performance, one of the very important uh, critical aspect here, uh, Fortinet uh, use our own uh, proprietary ASIC chipset, uh, which has the SPU security processing unit and the NPU network processing unit, which is really critical and important, uh, uh, like, you know, for the uh, uh, performance of uh, uh, the processing the packets. Uh, so what happens, like, you know, 
uh, th that's where the critical difference comes between others and these are all uh, performance uh, reports which are available which are tested and validated by nsc uh, lab certificate uh, the, the lab reports are available we'll be happy to share our uh, product uh, equivalent to any other uh, other competitors the percentage of better performance fortinet offers to our customers and fortinet secure sd wan is one single integrated solution which has a full fledged wan uh, uh, solution which is sd wan and advanced routing with ipv6 along with the full fledged security functionalities in one single cp sd branch again is very very powerful getting the lan wan and security together and ensuring that security is embedded across your lan wan and also uh, uh, every traffic which is going in and out which is very critical and that's where fortinet is very powerful in doing this uh, uh, like you know one single management and one single solution uh, advanced routing we discussed about it this is one of the most important factor to be considered is unlimited bandwidth fortinet never charge our customers based on the bandwidth which you are utilizing today or future tomorrow whatever the capacity of the appliance which you are buying today you are free to use the maximum bandwidth capacity whenever you are upgrading your capacity from uh, like you know 10 to 20 20 to 50 you don't need to pay anything uh, to fortinet till that until the time that appliance has that capacity 100 200 or 500 mbps or gigs like you know you are free to use or upgrade the bandwidth without paying anything extra as a bandwidth licensing subscription cost to fortinet cloud on ramp which we discussed and the most important thing is the security fabric fortinet is building a fabulous security fabric which is like a, a main thick wire which is you can call it as a motherboard where all these elements get fit, fixed on to that like you know your ngfw your sd wan your routing your lan functionalities your siem xdr your 40 monitor there are so many uh, end to end security solutions and we are building this whole security fabric which is going to give a complete holistic one single uh, uh, solution to our customers this is an amazing uh, like you know the security fabric which fortinet uh, has built for our customers so uh, i think like you know by by now you would have definitely got convinced that uh, uh, one st wan brings a lot of benefit particularly for the bfsi sector the adoption is very huge. We have tons of uh, uh, BFSI customer, uh, customers adopted to Fortinet Secure SD WAN solution. Two, uh, recognition, and I have shared some few customer, uh, like, you know, the uh, whatever uh, the recognition which they have shared along with us. Uh, three, some of the important critical features, functionalities. Four, how better we are compared to, uh, like, you know, the other competitors. And why, why customers to Fortinet? So just to summarize, I thought it's important for us to kind of go back and uh, list down whatever the things which we have discussed. I'm sure that uh, this discussion uh, definitely adds value, bring a lot of business benefit together. And Fortinet is really, really <clears throat> uh, keen and interested to do technology partnership with your organization. Uh, like, you know, so please feel free to get in touch with us. Our team is there across all the regions. Our partners, certified partners is there across in every single region uh, who can able to implement and uh, like, you know, uh, take care of the managed services activities for you for any of our solution stack. So with that, uh, I will conclude uh, my conversation and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Syed Haider who is going to do a live demo and uh, stay tuned post Haider's presentation we are going to have a very very interesting tech chart uh, uh, tech chat along with our bfsi lead uh, uh, ms anita shreyekar so with that thank you so much and uh, 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 nice meeting you all virtually look forward to meet you in person thank you so much Yeah, hi, good, good morning, everybody. Uh, it was really a wonderful session to now uh, with my colleagues. 
uh, pitching in the SD MAN solution, right? So I'm here to basically uh, showcase our solution, uh, especially from a working perspective. No, so so we, you're, you're basically going to see a live demo of the session. So so let's, without any further ado, let me share my screen. So let's move into the demo. Right. So we do all know that a uh, main part in Nazi right so so we talk about the centralized manager platform which is body manager right so so let's log into this and let's see you know the architecture that we're trying to arrive at in the demo okay so before that let's we let let me go into a brief architecture of what you would see here uh, as uh, something which is which almost 90% of our customers would basically have in the network. Okay, um, ideally, you know, it would be uh, two types of hubs, locations, probably a DC and a DR or an active active data center, and then that you have a cloud data center, which is shown on the right hand side. Okay, and then you do have branches. Now, uh, the, the main objective of SDVAN, as uh, Ramanan would have highlighted, is basically uh, the the number of ISPs that are basically connecting to your, um, sorry, the, the, the links, the connectivity from the branch offices to your hub locations, right? So here in, in our typical lab scenario that I'm gonna to showcase to you, we basically have two ISPs from each of the branches as well as in each of the hub locations, as well as the cloud. Cloud, obviously that's one in one, right? So so let's look, let's, let us look into the, uh, uh, a ready setup, a setup that's already done from a 4D manager perspective, uh, and uh, and it's uh, we just let's let's look at the features of our SDMAN solution. So let me log in to the 4D manager. So so the moment you log in, obviously you basically get a, a number of icons as you can see here uh, quite quite shortly. Uh, so these are nothing but a combination of our complete management fabric, what we call as a management fabric. So even though we have two separate, solu uh, two separate solutions, which is a 4D manager and a 4D analyzer, you get a single pane of glass the moment you log into your 4D manager, which is basically uh, the, the, the first two icons belong to the 4D manager solution and the, the last row of icons. Now let's look into the main part, which is your device manager. So here you can see that I do have um, the two hub locations, the 40 gates of the two hub locations, uh, the cloud gateway, and then you have the two branches, right? So let us look more from how a not SOC team would look at. Remember, so I am adding the word SOC here. The reason is because our solution is a secure SD-WAN solution, just not a as a plain as the one solution. I just need to keep, keep on reminding uh, our audience on this, right? So, so you can see here that the branches basically have around six overlays. Uh, each overlay, which is nothing but a VPN, uh, going through the two underlays, which is, you know, the one one and the one two, like there are two ISPs from each branch. Just for, for the sake of, Convenience. I'm just kept. I have kept all the locations within the south of India. <clears throat> Apologies for that. Uh, but you know, just uh, uh, so so that we can. I know I could. I could um, bring it in a, a shorter view, right? So if you if you look over here, uh, the hub is uh, hub one is basically Bangalore uh, or Bengaluru, and hub two is uh, Hyderabad, and uh, you have uh, the cloud data centers located in Mumbai. And then there are two branches, Chennai and Kochi, which are basically in uh, are the other two branches, right? So branch one and branch two, like Chennai is branch one and uh, Kochi is branch two, right? Uh, so just to, uh, as, as we proceed, I just want to ensure that, you know, if you do have any um, queries, do please please do uh, type in your queries. Uh, so, so, so let's uh, we we can probably address it up then in the end of the session. Okay, 
So now let's look into um, some of the um, use cases or rather you know, effectiveness of RSD band solution. So let, let us first target from a, a, a condition where you know one of the branch has a, a, a degraded ISP link performance. So in this case, what we basically do is we do obviously <clears throat> uh, just a moment. Okay. So we do is um, we do have in our setup, you, we do have a van simulator. Okay. So in a normal setup, I need to really get lucky to probably have an ISP, which is uh, quite bad, right? Uh, or rather, you know, maybe you, you would have encountered this in all the branches, but again, you know, for me, a lab setup, it's slightly difficult. So I do have a van simulator, which basically uh, I would log in. Okay. It's, uh, and this, in this simulator, uh, if I go back to my diagram, I could see that my branch is connected to ETH1. Okay, so so you could what I would do is I would just go and increase my delay for the ETH1 link to 250. Yes. So obviously, you know, I do have a threshold set uh, so that <clears throat> my SD band solution would be able to detect it. Obviously, you know, it takes some time to see that for the second refresh. I was able to uh, get a link condition, a degraded link condition. So, so this basically, obviously, you could see that you know if I have on my my mouse, I could see that it has a latency more than 200 uh, milliseconds. Uh, but the jitter and packet loss are quite fine, right? So, so obviously, you know, since I have um, van one, one of the ISP of the branch is down. So the overlays which are associated with that particular ISP are also showing in a degraded condition, right? So this is orange probably, you know, in a remote session, you'll not be able to figure it out properly. It's an orange. So uh, orange, we do have a traffic light system. Green means healthy. Um, orange means unhealthy. And obviously red means the link is down, right? So, so here, here you, you see that you know the solution was able to instantaneously identify uh, that the link is down. Let's go and dr drill down and see exactly how it basically uh, gives more information uh, in, in the dashboard. So you can see here the, the health check status for the past one hour. And uh, yes, for the past few minutes, uh, you can see that you know the link has degraded, right? And uh, also not only that, it does show you uh, what is the, uh, the the various SD band rules that have been configured here, and not only that, what is the best path for each of the things, uh, each of the rule? Okay, so here ideally, what say that okay, I have my cloud applications, I have my critical DI traffic, I have a critical video. So just uh, just as a reminder over here, 40, 40 nets SD band solution is basically application based right so which means that you know it's a next generation application based it can identify your applications not just ports and protocols and uh, and based on that take the traffic decisions okay based on the sla for that particular application so we do have uh, we do track our uh, slas uh, through both active and passive means active in the sense we do generate synthetic probes to ensure uh, to check whether you know our particular uh, end application or a particular IP in a data center or a cloud data center or a, uh, or, a or an IP in a public IP is is a, able to respond properly uh, for for a ping or again we do have various protocols to check that just not we just not restricted to the ping and also we have a passive probe so probably I will just show you over here uh, in our SD WAN template this is the template that goes into all our branches. Uh, so obviously, you know, uh, we we do have the flexibility of orchestrating this uh, from a perspective that you know different regions or different branches or different departments uh, branches with different departments can basically have different templates, right? So you can all group together and it can be easily pushed and managed. So okay, now let's look into uh, some of the performance SLAs that we have seen here. For instance, it's one of the performance SLA. What uh, what we do doing is we're doing an active probe. Or HTTP traffic, which is an end-to-end -end probe directly to that application. So, which means you know we'll really come to know which link has a better preferred path, not just to the footstep of the data center, but to that application itself. 
right? So, so we have chosen two overlays over here, and obviously, you know, uh, uh, the probes will basically, you know, check both the parts uh, for, uh, for, and we do define a threshold over here along with uh, the frequency of checking, right? Which is half a millisecond, and uh, we can basically, you know. Uh, check whether a link is down in three or five times of uh, half a millisecond, which is around you know 1.5 uh, 1.5 seconds. Okay, so so we do uh, this is just a brief of our SLA, not just and to carry on we do also have a passive based SLA, which means you know we do track a particular application. Okay, so you can basically define a particular application, but uh, we we still do a ping. The reason is because in the case that that particular application is not sending in any traffic we do send our probes so that you know we ensure that we're not taken out by surprise when the application starts and then we understand that that particular application is suffering because the link is bad uh, somewhere in the upstream so 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 we do have this uh, dual nature uh, so when a, when a passive is done we also do an active probe when the application is not uh, there so otherwise we do uh, the passive probe uh, based on the application, for instance, you can track your Zoom applications. You can see if a Zoom uh, a, a Zoom session has a lot of um, uh, packet drops, which means you know there are a lot of retransmissions, uh, and also you know uh, the, the three-way handshake or the initial handshake or even uh, the round trip time, you know that also can be constantly measured to see that you know what's the latency of end-to-end uh, -end latency, the actual end-to-end -end latency. So we do get a, a really fair idea of all these uh, all these applications so you can have like let's say you have like 10 or 15 applications i can have 10 or 15 different rules for each of these applications so in this way you can uh, ensure that i can have a very granular uh, performance oriented sd wan solution right so so now let's go into let's go back to our monitor view and let's try to restore back this link okay so, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to restore back. Uh, I go to my VAM simulator and I reduce my value uh, back to the old one uh, from 200 milliseconds. The moment I do that, obviously our 40, <coughs> our 40 manager, I go into the 40 manager and I, I probably do some refresh. I could see that, you know, slowly there are uh, performance, uh, the links have been identified uh, as um, healed and obviously it's added back to the SD WAN. So uh, amongst the healthy links. So obviously now the SD WAN path uh, it comes back to the old one where you know a certain particular path is preferred. As you can see here, I, I even forgot to um, like probably state over here that uh, we just we are selecting one of the paths. to the various data centers from the branch location. Uh, obviously, you know, that doesn't mean that we only support one part. We can even load balance between multiple parts. Uh, so again, you know, you can uh, you can have uh, uh, any number of uh, overlays, uh, but obviously I would say that, you know, there's always the overlays are proportionate to the number of underlays. Again, you know, this question comes in uh, common, common question. So is this overlays uh, also, or the underlays, how many ISPs can an SD WAN device of 40 minutes support? We, we don't have any sorts of restriction. You, you want 10, you can go ahead with 10. Obviously, you know, when, uh, when I'm looking at low end units, uh, they have lesser port density. That means that obviously my ISP, uh, the number of uh, ISP connectivities also can get restricted, uh, provided if you have a L2 switch, you can always, you know, go ahead with more than 10 or 20, stuff like that. But still, um, nobody would want to have more number of devices in the branch, right? So, so we all know, you know, having number of devices, increasing the, the number of devices in the branch, which again, you know, you, you need to manage. So as you could see here, uh, you could see a more granular view of all this uh, traffic that's getting switched over from one overlay to another overlay, right? So let me just probably uh, switch uh, so if I basically look only at underlay, I can just uh, switch off all the traffic. So so just with the underlay traffic over here, I can see that you know uh, the port one traffic goes down, and, port, and simultaneously the port two traffic um, comes up. But again, when the link is restored, the port two goes down, the port one 
comes up, right? This is from the underlay, which is the ISPs. And obviously the overlay, which are the VPNs, are, are also can be, you know, uh, also can be monitored there. Obviously what I'm doing is, this is my lab setup. I'm running some sort of, you know, um, I generate this traffic over here. So, so that, you know, you would get, uh, so, so you, you get all these uh, data points populated, as you see that uh, these are the different health checks that are going to, so obviously the latency is high. Um, uh, uh, during that period when we made that high, right? So the other uh, visitor and the packet loss is almost negligible or lesser than the thresholds, right? So this is the threshold over here. So, uh, so uh, let's uh, move into now another condition, another use case which is commonly uh, told to us. That's you know basically uh, what happens uh, when you know a, a hub location basically uh, a circuit and the hub location goes down, right? So now let's look at the hub one, um, so which is an active uh, in my setup basically it's an active standby data center. So hub one, what happens if a link one of the link fails? what happens if both the link fails right this is something that you know let's uh, envision this uh, let's probably play out the scenario okay so so we have like hub one is in eth5 okay so here what we do is i go again to my uh, sd uh, simulator go to eth5 and i basically add a uh, let's say a 100 percent packet loss uh, just to simulate a link down scenario we can also have a scenario where you know i can go for uh, 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 a latency um, based uh, scenario as well um, as you could see here the moment i just made the uh, a link down scenario which is 100 percent packet loss uh, you could uh, see that you know there are these overlays which are uh, being tracked uh, which are basically failing off okay so so you could see that uh, since i've done it on the hub one Okay, the first ISP of the hub one, there's only one overlay which basically goes off. Okay, uh, so uh, just as a, just as a, um, I would say that from a, um, from a perspective of a branch network, okay, let me just also state to you that I have this uh, Linux PC running on my branch with some things running to the data centers. And the most important thing is I have a, a wipe server running. Okay, and in fact, you know, I've done, I've kept it running even before the demo started. So it's running for the past one hour, 33 minutes. So, so, so this is just to show that, you know, uh, no matter whatever is the failure, fa fa failure of the links, your wipe, uh, this session is are sustained. Any sorts of real time sessions are sustained. Okay, so, so now let's go into uh, um, our, uh, lab setup, and we'll what we'll do is we'll simulate a 100% failure of the hub. So, which means both the ISP of the hubs are down, right? Obviously, ETH5 is down here. So, we'll go and uh, uh, change even for the ETH6, we'll give a loss of 100%. Uh, there are software based emulators that can be like a slight, um, uh, what, what I can say that, you know. Um, they're, they're not very perfect is what actually I want to uh, state over here. So, so let's now look at, you could see that clearly the whole hub one overlays, which is the hub one VPN one and hub one VPN two, both of them are down. So at the same time, uh, so now the entire traffic is basically flowing to hub two. How do I verify that? I can go into my rules. I can basically, uh, I could see here that, you know, it's hub two. The path is basically hub two, um, and uh, the preferred one is uh, uh, basically you know any anything to the branch to the data center is going to the hub two VPN one. So so they're failed over. So let's um, so you can see that here you know what shown is a red condition which is a link down condition. Okay, so okay you can see here. So let's let us restore back. Uh, these uh, packet loss conditions. Uh, so I will restore back the ETH5 and uh, for ETH6 as well. I would uh, put it back to this, this uh, zero loss and simulating a real world condition. 
So, so obviously now if I go back, uh, let me go back to my Ubuntu uh, PC, which is behind branch one. You can still say that, you know, it's connected to the DC server. Uh, the white session is still going on. The, the things are basically still going on for both the cloud data center as well as the uh, cloud data centers over here and, and the on-prem data centers over here. So, so let's, uh, now, now that we are restored, we could see that, you know, the, all the tunnels are restored back. So obviously, you know, so with this, um, uh, we do say that, you know, like uh, our Corrigate sd van actively tracks the applications, uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, application path, uh, and uh, basically, you know, converges, um, which is much, quite much faster compared to any of sorts of, you know, uh, traditional BGP or OSPF based convergence. So, and obviously, you know, it ensures that, you know, the path has uh, stability, right? Okay, so let's look at the last use case that we have uh, in this demo. and. This is the use case which I feel that you know a lot of customers ask how easy is and how easy is it to provision an SD card, right? Uh, it's pretty, pretty easy, and that's what we call as a zero touch provisioning. Okay, so but uh, obviously in this demo, I will not be able to show an exact zero touch provisioning replica because we require a cloud service for that. Uh, I would show is some sort of a light touch provision, right? So, which means that uh, when a device, uh, we, we do a minimalistic configuration, which is just add the IP of the manager, uh, the SD WAN manager, and then, you know, it provisions, uh, obviously, it gets all the configurations and uh, it comes up by itself. So, let's look from a diagram perspective, from a network diagram perspective, you can see that branch three is yet to be provisioned. It's a new branch, and so that as a new branch. So, what I would do is in my lab, I'll basically go and add, uh, I'm sorry about that. I'll just add uh, a branch. Um, I'll log into branch three um, and uh, check over here. Uh, it's uh, see, uh, show you. I'll show you the configuration. Basically, it is not provisioned. It's just probably like a factory default. It has a blank configuration uh, and uh, with no uh, interface conflict except for the uh, as you see here. There's no interface conflict except for the management. Type. Uh, so, which is which is what I'm about. So, let me quickly grab the serial number of this. Okay, it's the moment I grab the serial number here. Uh, I uh, what I do is let's assume that this branch is uh, this uh, uh, the 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 foreign gate to the branch is not yet sent, not yet dispatched. So, what your knock see uh, knock or sock team can basically do this. They can pre provision this device. So, what I do is go and add the device, model device. I say branch three, and I add the serial number over here along with the, the device group. Again, you know, we can have multiple groups that we want. And uh, we assign a particular policy package on the PSD RAM. And uh, I basically go and assign templates to this. These templates are the best practice templates that you will basically get. Obviously, there are some uh, you need to basically go and clone and create these uh, based on your uh, change those IP values based on your network architecture. Otherwise, these are already like uh, pre-configured templates which are available for you. Um, just that you know you have to customize it to your environment, and uh, then you know you just associate these templates. And I basically run this wizard. I do the first step of pre-provisioning. Okay. So with this first uh, step of pre-provisioning, I basically <coughs> go and add this, um, and I do a, run a small script. The script is for um, changing your interfaces because you know probably your device comes with uh, inbuilt uh, features of switch. In case of uh, my lab setup, basically it's a VM. Or you get VMs, which basically has only four interfaces. You want to expand it to ten interfaces. Similarly, you know, a hardware for the gate, you can basically have um, a switch interface. You want to break down the switch interface into individual uh, individual interfaces, which can basically uh, connect more ISPs. Basically, you know. So what I do is basically I do uh, run the script, which is a big thing. Again, you know, whatever I'm doing here, I'm pre-provisioning it. Still, uh, the device is not yet connected. So this is probably the step two of pre-provisioning. And uh, the third step is basically in my templates, I basically, if I go to any of these templates, I can show you here, 
for instance, I go to my system template, uh, to plan system template. I can basically show you here when I define my interfaces, I basically uh, use a, a value, a variable value. So which means, you know, this is a, a dollar sign with the brackets, uh, with, the, uh, with the curve brackets, right? So you have random IP. So this is a variable. So what I do is, um, obviously this variable changes for each of the branches. So whenever I provision these branches, I basically define these variables. So let me go back to uh, the branch three pre-provisioning uh, pre template and, uh, and basically define this uh, value here. So uh, you could see here, basically uh, I, I have uh, I copy three. So I basically copy all these uh, values over here. So you have a uh, one-one gateway, then you have a LAN IP, uh, you have a uh, gateway. So and the IP, right? So so with this, what uh, what I basically do is I uh, we we instruct the file manager to go uh, replace the variables found in this uh, index with these values because obviously these values change for each other and one thing uh, important over here uh, even though i'm manually entering this i'm doing it just for one sake of branch you can also have a feature of either scripting this and upload uh, and uploading uh, through an csv file to a party manager uh, either scripting or uploading a csv file to the file manager you can do it either ways so so that you know you can ensure that a bulk uh, set of devices uh, configurations or templates with the variables, the variables can be um, can be uploaded, right? So let me uh, fix this location as uh, for this particular branch thing. So so with this, what I basically do is I completed my third step. Uh, my my fourth step is a, a simple thing. I just do a uh, I install. Uh, I do a quick install, so which means that. Uh, this is where you know the variables go, are replaced with the actual values for that particular branch. So the moment I do that, I do my final provisioning step, which is the full, um, so that uh, I in install the firewall policy as well, which is an important uh, aspect here, right? And uh, and with this, I'm done. Okay, so my pre provision is done. So it's hardly took five to eight minutes to pre provisioning to pre pre provision this uh, setup right so now my pre provision is done my NAC uh, probably I just uh, repeat this because you know, I just read it uh, through uh, so so what I want to emphasize over here is um, the NAC the NOC SOC team basically does this pre provision five to eight minutes uh, obviously, it took uh, five to eight minutes for one single device, but obviously, it will, uh, even if it's a hundred device, I, I can do that with scripts uh, with the same time, like five to eight minutes. Okay, so so once that is done, okay, now let's uh, assume that this device is shipped, and uh, in my case, because I cannot, uh, I don't have that forty deploy service, which is zero touch provisioning. So in case you have a forty deploy service, zero touch provisioning, it's a cloud based service. You just Ask me to ask the uh, who are the branch just to connect uh, the ISP, uh, which, which can provide you a DHCP IP uh, on the WAN port of the 40K. So the moment uh, it gets a DHCP IP and it uh, contacts the 40 deploy service and it gets the 40 manager IP. Uh, but in our case, you know, since we don't have the 40, I cannot showcase that 40 deploy service. What I basically do here is I go and manually enter the 40 manager IP. Right. So, so I basically uh, go in my uh, fabric connector and I enter the 40 manager IP. Uh, I uh, make it as on for the manager. So, so we have I copy uh, and paste the IP of the 40 manager. And that's it. This is the only thing that has to be done on the field, right? For a light touch provisioning, but for a zero touch provisioning, you not even do that. So, uh, and uh, when I obviously come back to my 40 manager, I can see that something's automatically happening in the task, in the task bar above. 
So uh, you can see that you know this device is being provisioned. The 40 gate contacts the 40 manager, and immediately the 40 manager, uh, because it is pre-authorized this device. Again, you know, since I, even though I'm doing it with the serial number, you can even add certificates and you know enhance the security to that. Uh, so so uh, so it would pre-provision all these configurations to that particular device, and uh, your device basically come uh, come up uh, on the SD band. Uh, monitor so so let's wait for that uh, provisioning uh, uh, for the device to be provisioned it will basically take uh, not more than two or three minutes uh, at the uh, india map in to see you know uh, what's the status of this Let's, uh, so uh, you could see here the branch three is basically provisioned. Okay, so it has all the uh, six uh, variables over here. Um, let's uh, and if I basically drill down into my branch three, so I can actually you know see uh, that you know obviously it has been proving recently, uh, and health checks have been feeding for that. Uh, so, and uh, you could uh, see almost every aspect here, obviously, because it was, uh, it was down and it came up, you could see that clearly, you know, the graph, the traffic, the traffic patterns, right? So, so this uh, basically just to, uh, so with this, you know, just to uh, showcase this, you know, the, so you could see here now in the map as well, there was some glitch before. You could see that uh, in the map as well, you could see that, you know, the it's been provisioned and uh, you could see all the health checks are perfectly running over here. Okay, so with this, I, I believe we conclude our demo. Uh, we have shown three use cases where, you know, the failure of the branch branches, uh, ISP in the branch, the failure of the ISP in the hub or rather the complete hub failover for an, in an active passive hub scenario. And the third one is provisioning of the branch. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope that is informative. Uh, and uh, please, uh, uh, for the questions, please do give, uh, submit your questions so that you know we will uh, we can answer that offline. Okay, so through, through email, we'll send uh, the Fortinet team will send send back uh, the replies to the email. And thank you very much, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Heather, for an amazing demo session. Moving on, uh, we have an exciting segment, which is a tech chat uh, with three of very interesting speakers. So I will call upon Mr. Vinay Gorse, uh, Senior Vice President, DSCI, Mr. Ramanan, Director Sales, SD WAN Fortinet, and Anita, Head BFSI India and Sark. I will request all to join me on the stage and start this interesting tech chat. Welcome all. Welcome all. Thank you, uh, Vibhor. Uh, um, uh, all, uh, all of you uh, who are joining the financial security conclude of this version, I welcome you all for this uh, uh, this master class. As you had seen, um, uh, the master class are largely made for uh, drilling down of particular subjects of cyber security, and we are seeing all the innovation happening in uh, financial technology area and BFSI sector. And there are various different dimensions and the various different interventions are being made at a larger national level as well as at a very specific technology industry level and also the the way the digitizations are happening at individual organization and even in bpsa segment we know there are various different type of the bpsa sector and very different level and various different 
uh, size of the BFSI organization have been working towards digitize, digitizing to provide better customer services or uh, experience basically to improve their own productivity and more importantly, creating new possibility. So connectivity remain as a very important challenge. And when you try to connect the uh, network to the farthest possible uh, uh, location to even try to connect the different locations of the bank or where there are various different areas where connectivity is very critically important and the connectivity probably sometimes exposes you to a lot of security and privacy, uh, security issues and threats as well. So as we have seen in the in this uh, interaction, so uh, to just discuss and summarize this discussion, we have both Anita and Ramanan here. Anita leads the uh, BFSI uh, uh, practice of a 14 uh, in India and SARC. And um, uh, she had been in the industry looking at the BFSI sector and how the evaluations are happening in the, in the area. And Ramanan very specifically looks at uh, uh, the HD, HD1 evaluation happening in a, um, a BFSI sector, basically. So Anita, I would like to start with you. Uh, what kind of technology transformation that you see here in India and other parts of the uh, globe, especially in SAG, that is your area of operation, basically. So what kind of technology evaluations, trends that you have been seeing, and what are those key drivers, basically, which are pushing for those technology adoption and uh, uh, transformations? OK. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Vinayak. You know, just to put the thought right, digital transformation is fueling the market growth. And if you look at the phenomenal growth of digitization, right? If you see, it's basically 20% year on year. And with the kind of uh, digital uh, payments which has grown, it is almost grown, I could say, 20%, which is approximately the forecasted number is almost 135 billion till 2023. So that is one. Secondly, if you look at the convergence of industries, right? Uh, with the recent, which is uh, HDFC Limited with HDFC Bank. And if you look at the fusion of technologies, which is becoming basically because of the amalgamation of these, I mean, it is the banking marketplace of the future, where new services and offerings are happening via model and platform base, which is primarily on banking as a platform and banking as a service. Okay. And because of which innovation is coming back because a lot of BFSA sectors are trying to cope up with the competition as well as with the fintech companies where they are trying to rediscover that what could be the tailored experience that could be offered through their digital offerings okay and very important you know digital brain okay digital brain it, it is getting us caring hard when i talk about this banks are really looking at having meaningful conversations basically with the customers in digital spaces so technologies disruptive technologies like ai that are basically coming in place that can actually help this make this human connection. Okay. And uh, I could say payments, payments, we are talking about anywhere, anytime. And now it is talking about any now, anyhow, because that is actually going to be the next norm with the CBDC coming in place. And with the current, uh, uh, with the current post pandemic, you know, we have seen that all the organizations are rethinking of working, which is primarily hybrid work is here to stay if not actually preferred by many realities okay so this is something which is primarily transforming most of the organizations to look at what technologies can be looked at yeah but uh from the context of this discussion right so you talked about key trend and hybrid uh work uh, which is which is reality i was talking to some of the CISOs and all of them are saying that it's not only services company, but even the user banking or the sector would remain like a heartbeat work culture going forward. Uh, secondly, the the way the uh, uh, transformations are coming, a lot of new products are being being developed, and those products are being targeted to the even tier three, tier four city, the new roller part of the country as well. Actually, so sometimes the experience uh, of uh, uh, providing the better consumers, customer services, remain at a very metro or bigger city, but now those experiences and those kind of gains are now even given, getting into more disaggregated or more such kind of a uh, uh, geographical uh, uh, expansion as well. So in that case, um, if I had to really talk, uh, check with you, so some key thing which are really enabling from the connectivity perspective, from the networking perspective, or from the bringing all that banking cap capabilities to the push step of the 
consumer irrespective of where he or she is located basically so so what do you think that that is really bringing uh, those capability to the doorstep of the customer and those customers are now all across the india and any part of the india as well actually yeah i understand so when i uh, as i said right a uh, digital transformation is primarily a strategic initiative okay and it is now because everyone are moving to cloud the need to support these cloud based applications across the sites has led you know many organizations to switch from wide area networks to a software defined wan it is primarily to eliminate the performance and the operation bottlenecks okay and that is where i talk about sd wan which is primarily one of the most flexible than the legacy wan this however expands the attack surfaces but it is primarily it is important that you need to protect these data categories end points okay that was primarily not existing ago earlier okay now most of the organizations are looking at addressing this risk by adding security and monitoring solutions to the sd wan environments which is primarily increasing cost and complexity so ramanan uh, so the sd wan so let's try to understand the business driver behind adoption of the sd wan basically right so uh, why and what are those bottleneck that currently we see in network and and that probably provides the use case or driver for somebody to look at the software based approach to the network absolutely so when i give you look at efsi as a sector uh, it is like you know widespread in terms of the number of branches and the way at which they serve their customers in terms of their different offerings and their betterment to reach the customers more and more into many many smaller cities and villages and all those areas and uh, the traditional approach is been so far by and large like you know dependency on single connectivity uh, uh, like you know kind of a solution with the way the uh, uh, bfsi as a vertical the fintech organizations the heaviness of the application and the widespread of application which is really making them to rethink that there is a need and a, a definite need for this network and security architecture has to be redefined and that is actually pushing uh, customers to adopt to this sd wan from the traditional uh, erstwhile uh, network and security uh, siloed approach so if we look at what exactly the requirement Uh, today is one the network and security integrated solution no more it can work in two separate silos number one number two is giving that freedom and flexibility because not only in india even in other countries the connectivity is one of the paramount important when the technology has to reach to the last mile of the end customer so there should not be constraints in terms of technology linking with the connectivities and giving that freedom and flexibility to the customers like you know just give me some line of sight of internet and wherein we will be able to serve our customers in a better way and that is the need of the hour today so the primary challenges what uh, in not only bfsi sector in pretty much uh, all the uh, uh, verticals which we have seen the user experience is the most important thing the more and more digitalization which is happening paperless banking and paperless insurance organizations the way at which the speed at which they are doing in the heaviness of the application and the data transfer between one location from the branch to the head office or anywhere else it is becoming very very important and critical you can't just keep on increasing the bandwidth because that's not actually going to solve the purpose in terms of increasing the performance hence you have to adopt to some technology one which can able to help increasing the user experience two with more and more uh, we talk about the risk factors which is happening around like you know uh, in the market today uh, it's very very critical and important particularly in uh, bfsi sector uh, security is the paramount importance so without compromising every single component port and incoming outgoing traffic has to be 100% secured uh, so that needs to be the second one which needs to be uh, considered the third one is the complexity as anita mentioned rightly 
any technology will be successful when we touch upon these two c's which is cost and complexity so the complexity of managing the today's uh, network and security siloed architecture is really really like you know uh, complex in nature and uh, uh, customers looking out for a single dashboard or uh, the easiest way to access not only access but also to manage to record and to take reports everything which can be done in a most simplified manner all the uh, network when i mean network it could include your lan your wan your bandwidth and the security everything to be managed in one single console and the cost of course plays a very very important role we all know any technology adoption uh, has to showcase some business benefits and that business benefit one of the critical uh, business benefit is the lowering the tco and that's exactly the four key element which we offer as a secure sd wan solution in terms of bettering the user experience in terms of minimizing the uh, uh, the risk factors and also uh, the simplest and the easiest way of managing the environment and above all reducing the overall tco for the customers yeah. and you really summarize and what i get out of this interaction is one certainly the experience of customer right and while providing that experience to the customer there are so many things that you want to do as, with customer right so the gone are the days where we used to talk about the need to know it's more like a if, if the customer is there you, you are there to deliver uh, various different products and services to customer on various possible way basically various possible channel as well actually and while doing that it, it's another possibility that you create for yourself uh, uh, for the particular bank and for overall digitization as well actually and while doing that you need to also look at uh, the uh, how flexible you are in terms of providing that how agile and adaptable that you are in terms of uh, adapting to the new innovation new ideas because fintech is known as a uh, basically uh, a kind of a space where every day there are new startup new idea new use case which is coming in and you should be adaptable to those new use cases as well actually and then while we do on one hand you do that and other hand you have to make sure that the security is being also adhered to and there is a very good easy manageable way of security and at the same time manageable way um, of a privacy as well because going forward that will be also becoming a very important part so uh, anita uh, with this uh, i would really like to understand because you had been managing uh, this bfsi uh, uh, vertical at fortinet uh, in india and other parts of uh, uh, neighboring nation basically so what is the key strain basically so as a fortinet as an uh, one of the key leading force uh, uh, in this uh, so in the bfsi sector specifically i ask you uh, in india and other part of the sark nation as well i'd also like to hear your experience in the working with india and other sark nations as well So what are the key strength that you see that you offer to the table okay uh, as um, ramanan highlighted right in terms of the complexity and primarily is about security okay yeah. uh, so security is something which we primarily look at uh, you know as one of a key strength which we are talking about over the primarily sd wan technologies okay and that is if you look at the bfsi sector right i mean which i have been uh, talking to most of the organizations here within india and sark uh, security is something plays a very very important role in the fsi industry okay uh, primarily uh, you know uh, because with the kind of digital attack surface which has increased so much okay where you know currently users have uh, i could say if you are talking about tailored experience which is to be given to the users you could talk about experience which can be you know uh, all the applications which is going to be available on the mobile devices or it could be on any other platforms which is going to be available so when you're looking at security over the network so i think that is something which fortinet brings onto the table okay and uh, with respect to the broadest of the portfolio that we have more important is about uh, integration we also talk about you know it give uh, as raman and highlighted about end to end visibility okay that is something we bring into the table uh, is that we have been doing with most of the customers across the fsi industry and we are seeing many innovation uh, in fintech and more importantly from the digitization of the fsi sector in india right and especially digital payment uh, the kind of story we have created there is no 
parallel match to the story that we have created with a kind of intervention from the government and the kind of entire ecosystem where where entire financial transaction processing is unbundled in such a way that we have so many different players joining the transaction processing industry right especially in the payment side basically so what do you see happening in other neighboring nations basically because you look at those nations as well so are they catching up with are they seeing india uh, as an a uh, uh, kind of a benchmark for them or they have they have been charting their own story for this okay uh, so if you look at the other in uh, regions primarily if i had to really talk about the other sark industries i mean i could say the adoption of um, i could say sd1 is much much more there uh, which has already been accepted okay because they are looking at Uh, the value proposition of the sd1 technology which is primarily happening this is also you know intrinsic to the uh, guidelines which has been uh, you know done by the regulatory framework also that we have seen that you know most of the organizations there in the sark industries have already adopted this sd1 technology and they have taken the benefit they have reaped the benefit of uh, this technology on the fortinet platform uh, reducing the entire cost because what primarily matters is the entire roi okay and that is something which we have seen that most of the clients have already taken the benefit of that okay so that is where we are uh, uh, you know we are seeing this in the other regions as well so ramana and then question to you is if we are seeing that significant adoption in a sar country so what is the story in india so in terms of adoption yeah so BFSI adopting to uh, SD WAN as a technology. If you look at because as a technology, SD WAN exists for the last uh, six seven years, right? And uh, it's a technology migration, I would say, because earlier I terminate my links with the router. Today that router is getting replaced with the SD WAN because the router you have uh, ability to make use of only one single connectivity even though you pay to the service provider for two right so now the technology upgradation which is happening where like you know i make use of both the links and increase the pipe so that whatever the heaviness of the application the user experience increases number one at the same time i give that freedom and flexibility of any connectivity no dependency on one single like you know whether it is mplr or anything now today uh, we give that freedom to customers to pick and choose whether it is mplr or ill broadband 4g tomorrow 5g when it comes even public uh, internet connectivity with our uh, heaviness on the security which is embedded on the solution we ensure that no compromise on the security even though if it is a Uh, five uh, private uh, public internet uh, connectivity so the adoption in india uh, um, like you know region is again like you know considerably increasing in the last couple of years which we have seen the the early days like you know they started testing few banks started adopting few insurance companies started adopting and uh, then later like you know the expansion started happening and then the technology advancement where Uh, today it is no more just a connectivity freedom and flexibility and all those things lot of saas based application coming in and lot of these collaboration tools even within insurance and banking sector we see like you know br- branch managers want to sync up with other branch managers on a teams or a webex or a zoom call like you know this is kind of particularly post covid this is collaboration access is kind of increasing uh, heavily so if that is the case then you need to allow the branch managers at least in the branches or all the employees in a most secure manner to connect to those saas based application and collaboration tools audio video files data movement in the most secure manner so we have been very effectively doing this and there are good amount of bfsi customers who has adopted to fortinet secure sd wan and secure sd branch So SD WAN is more to do with WAN and security integrated. SD branch is WAN, LAN, security, everything uh, which goes as a hand in hand to the customers. Customers buy this and they really like this because for ages they have been struggling with this siloed approach of none. All these component point products in the branches, like you know, are not interoperable. Today we have an one integrated solution which takes care of everything which is there in the branches. 
and the users are happy customers are happy now yeah. and in the process you also improve the resiliency as well right because the dependency on one pipe is not there and uh, even i i believe ksd1 also allows suppose one line is going down so it will automatically pick up and probably session could also continue so in a way resiliency is always th- thought in the context of the central operation but uh, resiliency at a branch network is also very critically important um, so that also improves quite significantly with this but really good, yes. if i had to really ask you from the adoption perspective is uh, because we we look at the bps sector in india especially so there is always a big public sector uh, financial organization institutions there are private sector leading financial institution then there are uh, uh, tied to both uh, public and private sector then we have scheduled bank then the uh, commercial banks then the cooperative banks then uh, then the branch uh, 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 sell may for example the insurance has mostly the sales office in different small small town places basically so if you really help us understand where exactly the concentration of adoption uh, are going as of now currently i would say uh, like you know from the overall technology front banking is of course definitely the number one and uh, with the second one is the insurance uh, from fortinet standpoint again we are seeing a good amount of adoption both from the banking as we said uh, large banks even cooperative banks quite a lot of cooperative banks adopted to our technology and uh, from the insurance sector again we have good amount of uh, insurance companies who has adopted we at this point of time we are in discussion with a lot of customers uh, and as i said this uh, technology shift from router to sd wan happened few years back now customers are looking at moving away from vanilla sd wan to secure sd wan and secure sd yeah. branch yeah. So yeah. that shift is happening there fortinet has a much much bigger role to play because probably we are one of the, the very uh, like you know rare solution which uh, has all these ingredients which is really required and important for customers uh, like you know readily available which we have deployed and we have uh, banking customers and insurance companies who has adopted to this technology for la- many years i can say we have- will certainly come back to uh, secure sd1 but before we go there i want to ask a question and probably both of you can answer this so uh, so when we talk about digitization innovation and possibilities right so there is always a aspiration from the small branch network right and especially in a small town places or low area in, i come from the some of those area so sometimes they have been deprived of a lot of digitization possibilities right until now so do you see that gap is now getting filled because of such kind of a technology coming at their doorstep yeah absolutely like you know uh, as i said uh, the freedom and flexibility is what something which people expect and at the same time where do you want to keep the control right of course the expectation would be uh, like you yeah. know equal to access and a controlled environment but uh, as an organization the control has to be there centrally with the security organization where uh, for example i am allowed to access facebook i can go yeah. no problem like you know but i can't do anything with that the technology has increased considerably to the, such an extent i can't do like button press unlike button all right to that extent a minuscule level of having a granular control secure system is available today so we can meet the expectation of the people in terms of giving the freedom and flexibility but at the same time in the most controlled manner yeah so let me come to anitha on that right so there is always a, a one uh, orbit or a plane that we always discuss that when you talk about digitization innovation or possibility and you are giving people more control you are empowering them and in the process you are then uh expanding the uh, uh the surface attack surface uh, uh, for an organization basically right so i was just trying to reflect on uh from ramanan's point that while doing that how do you make sure that security is also uh uh adhere or probably ensured actually right so in the discussion of such kind of transition and transformation happening and most of the client that you must be 
dealing with in India and other parts of the geography. So, how much security uh, is central to the discussion basically? Is the convenience, productivity, experience take or take over on the security, or security is definitely central part of the discussion? Okay, uh, so it's a good question, Vinayak. Uh, I could say uh, security is at the core of the digital success, right? Because when you look at security, security talks about the people, the process, and the technology. Okay, it is primarily that you have the people who are cyber, who are tech savvy with all the uh, cyber security skill sets, which is really required to see. Because with the kind of you know networks which are becoming increasingly complex due to all these remote workers, so any security gap in this network can actually lead to it is an actually an ingress point to the hackers okay so in this context i would say that people who are responsible need to also be a completely a cyber security skill sets built in okay and when we are looking at the process because when uh, when you're looking about the process you need to also see that you have all the available you know i could say systems which is primarily connected to you know different apis because when you're looking at uh, enabling any kind of applications which ramanand spoke about saas applications you need to see that if those applications can be securely accessed to cloud okay because that is one of the major thing where most of the applications now are moving on cloud because there are organizations who are trying to look at the cloud journey as well and more important is technology it's because you, if you have the right technology implemented it that is something which is really going to build in and that is where fortinet stands very strong because we have the broadest of the portfolio uh, you know where we give you um, you know a complete integration stack and also with respect to automation built in okay so i would say that security is at the core of the digital success so ramana this secure sd1 and that is changing from SD1 to secure SD1 basically, right? So, so, the, so there is always when you talk about technology and especially security, there is always a, uh, sometimes pushes from demand side and sometimes pushes from supply side basically. Means you may innovate something in security and that's why you want to take it to the client or sometimes client want you to uh, uh, secure that basically. So, how, how do you see that SD1 journey? Is it between them or? Uh, is it demand laid or supply laid or both come together for secure SD WAN? Yeah, so uh, to be very frank, like you know, it's not a new technology, right? SD WAN, uh, yeah, it is a pull in and a must to have technology for all customers to adopt to because they see I have yeah. these, these challenges and this technology can meet and fix these problems for me. Hence, adoption for this particular technology has been increasing uh, in security again what we are embedding is we are consolidating these multiple technologies together as one single solution it's not something new uh, like you know as a technology which we are uh, kind of innovated uh, which is uh, called secure sd wan sd wan is a wan network technology security which is next generation firewall we are embedding together and making it as a secure sd wan and is it because fortinet got this and we are trying no there is a need of the hour for the market to adopt because your application landscape is changed today no more the days where you have all your apps sitting in one location all in the data center and your dr in another uh, uh, whether it is uh, near dr or like you know far dr wherever it's all completely widespread. Today, you are talking about your uh, application migrating to private cloud, some of the public cloud, and majority of the apps are moving towards SaaS-based application. So the traditional way of network security connectivity of all traffic has to come to one central location. From there, I will decide where the apps are sitting in. Too many pops and too many bandwidth moving up and down is actually creating the problem for the customer. Hence, we say, why can't you go make all the branches independent and intelligent and uh, have a very small setup, like, you know, which they can take decision on their own. And that's exactly is our solution, which is secure SD-WAN. 
it has the all the security component components embedded and it will decide where the application is sitting if it is on the dc it will go and access from dc directly if it is a saas based application i am going to access directly and through uh, accessing through the internet uh, uh, link which is directly available on my branches so giving so much of uh, uh, importance for uh, like you know the uh, the challenges the core key challenges which customers facing today this is a consolidated solution it's not a, a brand new technology it is exist in the market for two decades fortinet has been leaders in uh, the next generation firewall we are incorporating and bringing this uh, network and security together and we call it as secure driven networking so the this consolidation between networking and security and that to happening at a software level so that you and us quite a significant agility and configurability and programmability of a network and as well as security right so so this certainly i mean i mean in fact this year we we are seeing consolidation as a key theme for security and we probably would be doing a significant um, uh, campaign on a consolidation of a security how it is happening and this is a very great story at a network level how things are happening here so apart from this uh, so what do you think are the key capabilities that uh, somebody like fortinet is uh, working on or offering or probably uh, innovating and putting a lot of effort or investing on basically so that how do you see the future coming up with capability apart from this consolidation at a network and security level happening at a uh, primarily driven by software uh, so how do you see things evolving from the security overall suit that protonus must be having so can you some throw some light on way the technology capabilities in security is evolving potent seeing protonet and way it is evolving actually absolutely it's a brilliant question the reason behind like you know the uh, the the success of fortinet and the way uh, fortinet as an organization you would have seen uh, it's a public limited company and we have been growing significantly one of the reason is customer accept our vision our vision is to build the security fabric for our customers the security fabric is like a super highway you can call that you know a motherboard uh, the main the core area in that core area all these technologies are built in or you can just uh, like you know connecting this uh, whether it is next generation firewall or your wan or a lan or a nat solution siem uh, sor solution or uh, like you know xdr solution everything is like you know kind of uh, in one single mesh and that mesh is nothing but a security fabric and fortinet is very uh, intelligently building this security fabric for our customers the reason why is in it you as you know with your vast experience uh, or most of these technologies been on working on a very siloed approach uh, one talking to other like you know it's like kind of a very rarest possible yeah, in the industry so we want to break that rule and make all the networking and security components to talk to each other means i am a i am a employee from one of the insurance brands and uh, my system is affected why all the way i have to travel to my core firewall and he has to block or my branch firewall has to block i can be blocked at my port level itself so that there is absolutely no possibility of any hacker any kind of cyber attacks which we are going to give room for anybody to play around with so this is a fabulous uh, uh, technology build which uh, fortinet is doing our focus is on security fabric we have been uh, stitching and getting all the security components together and giving it as one single solution to our customer on a platter so that's uh, that's the way we are marching forward yeah and again bringing the discussion back to sd1 so if i have to really conclude this discussion in terms of um, in for the benefit of the participants here in this uh, financial security conclave uh, what are those parameters or differentiator basically so uh, which which makes a particular 
SD WAN approach or technology or particular product. Uh, in in this case, supporting it as a product, which probably gets more recognition, more adoption, uh, and more market leading capability. Basically, so what do you see? What makes basically a particular SD WAN uh, capability uh, more recognized in the market compared to others in the market? In the market. Yeah. So one of the um, like you know primary four things which we always talk to our customers which is very unique and uh, which we have been highlighting and showcasing in live to our customers uh, is one the performance and the user experience you will find a lot more difference between fortinet and the uh, rest of the people two like you know our forte is security and uh, we ensure that you are going to get the utmost security feature and functionalities without zero uh, uh, compromise on any of the security parameters uh, like you know that is number two the third one most important is the total cost of ownership reduction we as an organization don't believe like you know in terms of uh, uh, taxing customers with multiple uh, licensing and subscription this that and all those things our commercial model is very very simple and you will see a considerable uh, like you know differentiation in terms of the way at which our tco the way we showcase the tco in front of our customers uh, we service any other players in the industry and uh, the, uh, the the fourth one is as i said like you know this security fabric which we are building nobody in the industry who are doing it when i am saying we are building it is these technologies are available today. Customers are uh, like, you know, uh, incorporating or probably consolidating their multiple point product solution into one security fabric. And they could see the benefit in front of them. We can connect uh, with those customers. You can have a free chat with them, take their experience in terms of how they have been uh, leveraged and got benefited out of this solution. So. Some of these uh, are very, very uh, important and unique when you are considering. And main use case for adoption is whenever the router refresh coming in, think about migrating to secure SD WAN. Whenever you are UTM coming for refresh, think about not just to. So any point products, let's not get into that same old methodology of getting into point products and keep suffering. Rather, Getting into this consolidated one single solution, which is going to be agile, simple, easy to manage, and cost reduction. And may I, sometimes it's a it's a music to ear, right? So we always had this difficult relation between security and user experience, difficult relationship between security and performance, and also the security and new possibility basically. But somehow this consolidation and sometimes security is also driving those kind of innovation basically and uh, uh, this particular network level technology that we just discussed and uh, which also leading to create a fabric which could probably consolidate many things that you do as a point solution and integrate and converge that together uh, and consolidate together uh, to deliver the the business value in terms of agility performance and a lot of new possibility and user experience basically on other hand uh, while you do usually you lose on control but on other hand making it sure that you still retain control making sure that you still have centralized way of monitoring and managing and controlling thing basically so uh, so this is how this journey at a network uh, engineering architecture and innovation level is going and, and thank you both Ramanan and anita for being part of this particular interaction and also helping us host this master class basically and uh, really dwelling into the uh, this key evaluation which probably would be transforming the way the uh, uh, networking and innovation possibility that would be happening not only at the larger bigger city but uh, also smaller uh, uh, places as well so thank you for joining us today and thank you for helping us to set this up set this particular master class uh, on a sd1 technology thank you very much Thank you so much, Vinayak. Yeah. Really nice and had a great discussion. Yeah, thank you so much, Vinayak. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.